This is another tree that I've grown. Um, it's a white oak and I took a couple of branches off of it the other day. It's a little difficult to see the trunk. There you go. It's um, very narrow. It's only about three inches in diameter. And um, a couple of years ago, I don't know what this is. Some trees have insects that, um, that make what are called galls, G-A-L-L-S. And um, usually it is oak. And historically, ink was made from those galls. In fact, I've made um, iron gall ink and I made it a long time ago, but you make it from um, these like circular um, growths on the tree that are called galls. And then you have to, I, I think you put it with um, alum. I can't remember the recipe, I have it written down. But those aren't galls, uh, that is trunk damage and bark damage and I don't know what that is coming from. The gypsy moths were not really on this tree. Um, this is bittersweet that I had cut off of it. I'm thinking of taking this tree with me the same way I'm taking my pine. Now there you see this is a gypsy moth that is now in its uh, chrysalis and should have come out as a moth. I have, um, I saw it moving the other day and I didn't want to bother it, but now it's not moving, so I don't know what happened with that. But as you can see, I would have a lot of scrubbing on this tree too. And this must be some kind of bark disease um, because it's all up the other side of the tree. So, you know, I don't know. Um, this is another white oak right there. The, the very white gray tree right there is a white oak with the swing hanging off of it. And really no sign of this disease. I don't know if this is also from carpenter ants, if they tried to infest this tree. Um, I've never seen insects on it. So it's other than like that one gypsy moth. Um, I have no idea what that is. I would have to look it up, but it's it could be a fungus, but it, it it's all dry. It's not um, moldy or anything. So I am thinking white oak is a wonderful wood to carve. And I'm thinking of taking this tree with me the same way that I took the white pine. Now, I say I grew it because the landlord, over the years, what they do is whenever they see these uh, little white oaks pop up, they rip them right out and uh, they don't want trees popping up everywhere and this one I kind of protected until it got big enough where they couldn't just rip it out but now I'm thinking um, it's about six feet away from the house and I have trimmed the branches that go near the house that's the wood that I took so that no branches interfered with the house but if this gets as big as that one um, they would take it down anyway because it's too close to a house. By the way, you see the gray one I'm talking about, then to the right of that is a, um, a well, I, I call them scrub pine. It's a Pinus regida. And then to the right of that, further away over near that other house, two beautiful white pines just behind the Pinus regida and to the right. Two absolutely gorgeous white pines that are about, one is about 60 feet tall and one's about 40. Absolutely beautiful. No aphids, no ants, no problems. Um, but anyway, so something's getting this one too. Now, I had said we're on the list for a septic tank replacement. And I'm wondering if just the fact that the leaching field is, um, you know, it's not unsanitary, but it's definitely damp all the time. I don't know if that brings in different diseases that wouldn't normally be in a yard. Um, I would have to, I have to look this up 
and see what that could be. I mean, it could have mites. I guess it could have mites or something like that. I've just never seen anything like this. So before I take it down, I would um, find out what that is, find out if I want to deal with it. But again, uh, the, the landlord would take a tree like this down very easily. And there's quite a bit, it's about, this one's about 20 feet tall. Um, but I would be treating it the same way I treated the pine. I'd have to cut it in half to get it in the house after I scrubbed it. So this is a consideration of taking this one down simply for the wood and simply because the landlord is going to take it down probably anyway and throw it away. If that is only on the bark and not at the wood, then the wood underneath is fine. Um, the bittersweet vine that tried to wrap around it is rampant through here. It's killed a couple of trees just beyond the other fence. And um, the ivy doesn't help either. You know, so all of that sucks life away from the tree. This is good soil it's in. And I wouldn't have to do as much to hide the trunk or anything because they never cut. This is all lily of the valley and... Um, some black-eyed Susans. This is all forget-me-nots right here. And you see there's some lily of the valley right there. This is a lily of the valley seed pod. That's what those look like. Um, so I wouldn't have to hide the trunk as much. But see how the, the fence in the last two storms, the fence is being pushed back. So when I leave, they're going to come through here and they're probably going to rip all this out. So I might as well take um, my other tree. This is my other tree that I've been growing for um, probably about 12 years, maybe 13. I don't think it's as long as I've been growing the pine. Because I never had it in a tub and um, didn't really think of it as an indoor-outdoor tree, um, I can't remember exactly when I started growing it. But again, as an artist as well, this stuff is wonderful to draw. Wonderful. Even though it's obviously a bark problem, um, it's wonderful interest for an artist. Okay, I'm trying to look up what that is on the bark, and I'm afraid it might be mites. And, you know, I don't know if... Um, Pine saw and bleach will kill them. So this is, if you're into trees or want to learn about trees, the Manual of Woody Landscape Plants, their identification, ornamental characteristics, characteristics, culture, propagation, and use. This is the tree book. This book, it, it's expensive. Um, if you buy it new, you can probably find it used this was the book that when I went to college for horticulture, um, this is the tree book. And a white oak is a Quercus alba, and it'll show you what the leaves look like and um, the acorns, and gives you the family, a description of the leaves, buds, stems, size, hardiness, texture, rate of gro uh, gro growth, flowers, all of it. And over here are diseases and insects. And it lists off quite a few that can attack a white oak. Anthracnose, basil canker, canker, leaf blister, leaf spots, powdery mildew, rust, twig blights, wilt, wood decay, blah, blah, blah. Um, in spite of this inspiring list of pests, White oak is a durable, long-lived tree, um, and it says this one is the most important species of the white oak group. The wood is used for furniture, flooring, interior finishing, boat building, wine, and whiskey casks. So it's a commercial tree, but it's very slow growing. Now, out of that list, canker is what... Um, came out at me because that's what it looks like is on the bark are cankers 
So then, um, at this book, now this book is Common Sense Pest Control. Least Toxic Solutions for Your Home, Garden, Pets, and Community. This is, um, there's a whole process called Integrated Plant Management. And it means you keep the insects in balance, you use certain predatory insects to take care of um, insects that are obviously a problem. Now, as I was looking up uh, canker, in the back of the book, I looked up canker and found canker worms. On this page, they list canker worms, which then brought me to page 117. And the way to deal with them is oils. Now, um, I actually have a couple of oils here. Um, I'm trying to think of the one that I have. So this talks about um, all different types of horticultural oils that you can spray on a tree to take care of a problem. Now, just right here, oils are commonly used on ornamental plants and fruit trees to combat adelgids, aphids, canker worms, leaf hoppers, leaf rollers, leaf tears, mealybugs, mites, mosquitoes, on and on and on. Now, I forget, I have neem oil. That's what I was trying to think of. I have neem oil, which um, is the one brand name is neem. And uh, it's the one oil that I've ever needed for anything. And basically, it smothers the insects. So that is what I would need to use on that tree if I were going to keep it alive. Now, I haven't specifically identified that as canker. I could now go online and look, at, look for pictures of canker, make sure that I have um, the right thing. But this is um, a table of different insects and mites killed by horticultural sprays. And I found something very interesting here regarding the pine because one of the things that could have been killed by neem oil if I had sprayed the tree um, is the pine needle aphid, and here's the scientific name, Tetranicus urticae, which is really a two-spotted spider mite. Now, I would have immediately grabbed the neem oil had I seen any webs. Spider mites usually have webs, and any of the aphids I saw on the pine did not have any web, um, nothing with webs. They were just um, all over the tree themselves. There were no webs, all over the branches, I mean, and the needles. So um, canker worm specifically is not listed here. I don't think. There are a few others. But this is, I'm going to have to look up canker worm probably online. But these two books, the um, Common Sense Pest Control, the authors are William Alkowski, Sheila Dar, and Helga Alkowski. This was also a required textbook for college. And it's wonderful. And it, it, it has prevented over the past um, 15 years. I don't buy pesticides. I don't use pesticides. I knew that, um, now this is an oil that would have killed the, the um, aphids on the pine. I knew ladybugs would do the same thing, um, that they would be feeding on them. So my problem is carpenter ants, because even if I had brought in uh, the ladybugs for the pine, the carpenter ants would have been farming the aphids as fast as the ladybugs were eating them. So it really would have been interesting. I think the tree would have suffered anyway. Um, it, the, the tree itself really needed like a pesticide spray. And because this is how I work, I didn't want to do that. But now I'm looking at the white oak and it has some kind of a canker worm or a canker mite probably 
and um, see here here's another mite it's called a bladder gall mite but that's like a tulip tree aphid some of these may be specific um, so I will have to do more research but I do know that these are all uh, scale insects white fly you can see you can tell right away what a, what white fly is I think it's canker and I have to do a little bit more research on canker to find out whether or not um, average household cleaners like pine salt and bleach will actually kill them I obviously if I'm gonna cut the tree down I don't want to be um, I'm not trying to preserve the tree at this time at this point I'm not trying to keep the tree growing I want that bark to be clean clean enough to be um, stored for the oak to dry so in this case because it's so extensive on the bark it may not be worth it it may not be worth it to take that tree for the wood it may be better to just let them dispose of it if they decide to take it down it's really too bad and it makes me wonder why two of the younger trees in my yard are getting such damage when the trees around my yard aren't and it, it's not really that I'm doing anything wrong uh, the, the white oak I've kind of ignored but it, but it shouldn't have mites all over it either um, it should be fine just like the tree 20 feet away from it so um, anyway these are two books that if you're interested in learning about trees they are really the basics one of my projects for college was I had to be able to identify uh, 500 different trees so um, when you you know people think of trees as separate from say rhododendrons or azaleas or um, any kind of ornamental plant but they 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 really are a large basis of horticulture of general horticulture and then you have um, specialists people that specialize only in trees would then become arborists and um, they would they would obviously just deal with trees but if you want to learn about them these two books are where you start now I'm online and I happen to be at the, the um, the, I guess it's the University of Illinois yeah University University of Illinois Extension Service a few of the major colleges have very good horticulture departments uh, the college I went to is in Canada actually uh, the University of Guelph in on, Ontario the other choice I was making was going to be Penn State because Penn State has um, those two colleges the University of Guelph and Penn State have reputations of having the best two horticulture programs but many other colleges have wonderful programs so this is University of Illinois and uh, many of them you can go on um, their websites and look different things up and this is uh, problems with white oak and many of these I am familiar with and I know what they are when I see them I've just never seen canker now even though mites can cause them I think that is really a fungal canker and that makes sense with the yard always being damp um, that a fungus might be able to take off and these are similar to what my tree looks like now obviously the picture on the right there is a larger tree and so you can have a larger problem um, now what this paragraph talks about is how to trim all of this off your tree but usually what this does um, it's a it's a disease it's called fungal canker disease and it will encircle either a branch or in my case it looks like it's trying to go around the trunk 
once it does that um, if it gets all the way around the trunk the tree dies anyway so um, it looks like if I take the tree down and uh, treat it with pine saw and bleach the way that I treated the pine that would kill any kind of a fungus um, unfortunately I can't tell for sure until I take the tree down um, I have to see what the wood looks like. There's another picture here that shows um, what wilt looks like. It might be lower down. And when you see wilt in a branch, it's right there. That's damaged tissue. And the tree or the branch had wilt. Obviously, you can't fully tell until you see that streaking in the wood. Um, so websites are wonderful ways to verify what you're already looking up. Obviously, it takes a little bit longer to do it. And this was a Google search. Um, one of these was Penn State. So let's go to Penn State. And it's always good to check with at least two websites to um, see what you're looking for. Oh, that leaf scorch. So at this point, what I'm looking for is um, fungal canker. And what the two books I was uh, referencing don't have are a lot of detailed pictures. Now they don't seem to have canker here. But maybe there's a page two or something. This is just their chart. Funny that they don't have a canker. These others that they have here are all the more common ones. Um, now I would have thought that's a mushroom, but it's actually a disease on the oak. So these are the fungus diseases. Because mushroom or fungi but it doesn't show canker. So I would have to do a search. And see if they have oak canker. Those are galls, but those are on a leaf. Usually they're on the tree. So they have it grouped into all the hardwoods, cankers of hardwoods. And they talk about them, but they don't have a lot of pictures. So actually, and this is what you may run into, um, Penn State is one of the best schools for horticulture, but the University of Illinois was more helpful with the problem I was having. So right now, I'm maybe 80% sure that um, I have a fungal canker on that tree. But I would have to... Um, uh, there was nothing on the branches I already took off. So now it becomes, um, I have to find out if uh, mites can be killed by um, 
pine sol and bleach. And if mites can be killed by that, um, the mites would be the worst case scenario. The more obvious answer is that it's a fungal canker and that any kind of fungus would be killed by pine sol and bleach. So, um, but it says in here that you can't really identify uh, the fungi until you actually look at the bark under a microscope or something because you're looking for um, growth of fungi. So you can see how specializing in trees or even in ornamental plant diseases becomes a whole world of science. And uh, you can just keep adding to your own information all the time when you have a problem. Now I've never seen canker before so now this is actually giving me a lot more knowledge about what to look for. It does make sense that it's canker, fungal canker simply because like I said my yard is always damp and the tree that's about 20 feet away from it is on a little bit of higher ground where the water always drains away from it. So um, this has been a video about a problem on a tree that I would like to take down and use the wood. Um, if I leave the tree and it is fungal, can fungal canker, it's going, to get, it's going to die anyway. So it's another case of finding a small tree or having a small tree that, even though I've, I have grown it, I've more or less ignored it because I expected it to do fine. And I haven't been focusing on any of the trees in the yard other than my white pine. So um, this is kind of a shock in a sense because I, I really thought it was fine until the other day when I took some branches off of it. So now it looks like I'll be taking it down and treating the wood the same way. And uh, this paragraph does say that the wood underneath will be either white, tan, or green if it's healthy. And you'll obviously be able to tell if it's just colored. All of that could still be carved. So um, for my purpose and carving, as long as I can treat the tree clean, cleanly enough, get it clean enough to be able to cut up and keep around the house, um, then I'm fine with taking it down. It's going to die anyway. Um, this describes trimming, and I can't trim the main trunk. Usually, um, you can trim off a branch. I can't trim one whole side of the trunk. So, um, I have no idea why my yard is not very friendly to trees. Now here's um, really a main reference website that I've used for years um, and I have to mention it here even though my other searches were looking specifically for oak canker. This is the USDA which is the U United States Department of Agriculture but this is their Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. And I became familiar with this website when I was a licensed grower. And um, you, when you're a grower, I'm in Massachusetts, we have to be licensed, we have to have a permit, we have to be inspected, um, all the plants are inspected for bugs. So um, that's how I originally got involved with this. There are also, um, well, first of all, it's a government website which means it can at times be difficult to navigate. The website itself is www.aphis.usda.gov. APHIS, Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. Um, now, on the menu here, they have plant health. So let's just see if they have anything, pests and diseases. Um, and this is where you get into the government stuff. Federal, federally recognized state managed phytosanitary program. Now that's similar to me having a grower's um, license because 
phytosanitary is uh, an inspection where they come in and they, they say your plants have no bugs, have no insects. Special needs, integrated plant health. Pest and disease programs. And this is why, um, obviously, they are going to tell you how they organize their programs. Now, up here in the search box, I'm going to put oak canker because sometimes. Now, this is interesting. There's been a couple of announcements on sudden oak death. And it happens to be, it looks like the fungus. Now, isn't that interesting? So, um, now that is, that's, uh, that looks like a rhododendron and not an oak. Those look like rhododendrons. Da, da, da. Okay, this is in the red oak group. Um, but stem lesions beneath the bark may bleed or ooze can kill adult plants. So that is not what we have. So this is another, and, and that's a pest alert. If you have red oaks of any kind, um, I'm trying to think. There was um, one of the towns on the Cape here that I, I grew up in um, has one main street that has oaks that were hundreds of years old, hundreds of years old. They were all huge. And um, there was, I wonder if this is when that came through, because several of them got lost all of a sudden. Um, now, if what my tree has is related at all to that, I have to take the tree down. Because, uh, um, and so you can see, this is a whole world of information at the USDA and APHIS. And um, you can ask an expert. You can, we'll go to their about page, which gives a site map. They also handle any kind of animal ins inspections, but I've only been involved with um, plants. So you can see it's a huge government agency. Um, when I used to come here, I used to look for the USDA maps. Um, like if I wanted to grow a plant. Um, I would look up the plant and whether or not it will grow in my zone. It's got a lot of, a lot of information here. So that's the USDA and APHIS. And we'll go back home there. Um, that was, it was Dutch elm disease. It wasn't um, this oak disease. It was Dutch elm disease that took out, they were elms in um, Centerville. And it took out all the old elms. I had to try and go back a few years there. But this seems like it's similar. There's a sudden oak um, canker on red oaks. So um, I actually have drawn scarlet oaks before, and I wonder if it is spreading to white oak. So you see how all of a sudden now, whether or not I take my tree down, as I walk around or take the dog out or wherever I go, I will now be looking for cankers on oaks because from what the website was saying here, it's um, kind of an emergency um, sudden and widespread disease that's hitting the trees. And again, this all ties in with global warming. 
if we can't take care of our trees and at least be aware of what's going on, the whole planet suffers. It, it, yes, it's just two trees in my backyard. Very, very small scale, doesn't matter at all in the big picture, except what matters now is the knowledge that I've gained, and that's why I've made these videos because the more we know about trees and how they're doing and what's happening to them the more we're going to know how we do and it's a reflection of the planet if all the trees are suddenly getting cankers there's a reason and we're all connected